In the criminal justice system, sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous. In New York City, the dedicated detectives who investigate these vicious felonies are members of an elite squad known as the Special Victims Unit. These are their stories. Recently, I was browsing YouTube, and <laughs> oh wait, I just realized how wrong that is. <laughs> oh shit, I'm so fucking lazy. <laughs> so, so about a month and a half ago, specifically on July 4th, I was browsing YouTube, and I came across a video from one of my favorite content creators, Adam Neely. By the way, Adam Neely is a wonderful content creator who makes music-based content, and I love every single one of his videos. I highly recommend them to anyone. Anyways, the video is entitled, Did Vox Plagiarize My Star Spangled Banner Video? And he discusses how a recent Vox media post compares to his own. His video was made more than half a year ago before Vox's, and while Neely did say that he didn't believe Vox intentionally plagiarized his own video, I don't think he plagiarized, but I think you could definitely have done a little bit better. Don't worry, we are going to get into what he means by that later. It did pique my interest, and I decided to research into it a little bit and draw my own conclusions. A video essay almost always has a main topic and then a few key points of evidence and or ideas that support the original topic. Judging whether a video essay like the ones we will be discussing is plagiarized will require us to focus on those key points or ideas. Take our first example, Vox's video on why we enjoy repetitive music and Ted Ed's video on the exact same topic. So here we have Ted Ed's video and here we have Vox's video. Ted Ed's video was released on September 2nd, 2014, and Vox's video was released on October 13th, in 2017. And now here are the key points made by each video. As you can see, there are some shared similarities. Vox and the original video do have two common points in the speech to song illusion and the test that had people rate a non-repetitive piece in a digitally edited one. But it is clear that Vox took the idea and expanded upon it. The runtime is about 5 minutes more, and they cover a lot more topics than the Ted Ed video did. And here we have two videos about triplets, one by Vox and one by The Most Unruly. And honestly, it is the same song and dance as the first one. You have less points made by the original video, Vox expands on it, and the runtime of the Vox video is about 5 minutes more. So what happened here is Vox really took the idea and expanded upon it, just like the two repetitive music videos. And this is when we get to the anthem video, and this is also where the pattern breaks. Already Neely's video is 3 minutes longer, and it makes way more points than Vox's video. They both cover the same ground, such as the ampetus and the changing of the final apex, but Neely's video goes so much more in depth into the history and into the theory behind it all. Most likely because his channel is for people who are already music nerds, and not the general population. Like how he doesn't need to explain what an interval is. But the depth of knowledge is still more in Adam Neely's video. It might just be the fact that Vox had referenced one of my favorite songs ever. And by the way, this is Vince Staples' Yeah Right, and it's been stuck in my head for months. Boy, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Boy, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Boy, yeah, right, yeah, right, yeah, right. Boy, yeah. But in my opinion, Vox Media didn't really plagiarize these videos. Everywhere you look, everywhere is a heart. Congrats, you got clickbaited. But wait, just stay with me here, because we still have a lot to talk about. Remember the clip from before? I don't think you plagiarized, but I think you could definitely have done a little bit better. Let's talk about it. 
So the issue with Vox Media creating an almost identical video to Adam Neely isn't necessarily the idea of Vox plagiarizing the content, but rather Vox being oblivious to the platform that they are currently on. Before Vox uploaded their Anthem video, Neely's was the top one based in music theory, and Vox either saw his video and refused to acknowledge it, or they didn't know of it at all, both of which are troubling scenarios. If they didn't know of it at all, that pretty much means that Vox Media outright doesn't do research on already discussed topics on the platform that they upload. If they saw the video and didn't acknowledge it, that's also troubling, because they could have at least sourced a video that makes almost the exact same points as them. This doesn't mean that Vox shouldn't have made the video at all, because they can do what they want, but they also could have done the easiest solution possible as Neely puts it. Vox could have done the research. The people putting together this video, they could have done the research, they could have found my video, they could have seen, hey, he's in New York City. I am, I don't mean to toot to my own horn, but I am an expert, every bit an expert as the other people that they interviewed on that video. I have the academic credentials, I've worked for close to a decade in New York as a orchestrator, arranger, composer, as well as musician. I do have a large music theory YouTube channel on the platform that you're publishing your YouTube video, uh, it would make sense, especially since Vox's office is in New York City, for me to just come down, hop on the train, say a few words, and then boom, we have this great synergy. And I would have loved to been part of this Vox video. It isn't like Neely is an untrustworthy source. He has degrees in music and he studied at Berkeley. But big companies like Vox and Great Big Story really crush smaller creators like this because they don't really do research on the platform that they already upload on. And in the end, it's smaller creators that get their video shoved out in favor of these videos that are sponsored by a literal car company. There comes a point where it gets really hard to compete. You can spend all the time you have researching on a video just for a production company with about 8 people working on the video to come in about 4 months later and make a completely better video than you. And there isn't really a solution to all of this. Just hope that Vox does a little more to include the creators already on the platform into their companies. But I'd take bets that it wouldn't happen. So recently I hit a thousand subscribers and I cannot express how much it all means to me and how much more inspired I am to create more entertaining and better content for you. My next video is going to be something completely different and more personal to me, but I still think you guys would like it. Also, I recently created a playlist on Spotify based around Nathan Zed's clothing line. It's supposed to be listened to in order, and I think you guys would like it. It has sort of an R&B pop sort of feel, and I really enjoy it, and I believe you will too. Anyways, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys soon, and take care.